Stood on land that was once an inn, infamous for their ladies of the night and drunken rogues, the original Victorian Kidderminster Town Hall and Courts are said to be diverse in its ghostly activities, Halloween hauntings and hangings. Kidderminster Telephone Exchange is allegedly haunted by Roland Hill, founder of the Postal Service. Uh, a black horse, the site is, is, said, is said to be haunted by the first landlady to run but the pub. Killed by her husband, he discovered both her and her secret lover embraced on the steps outside the building. Her footsteps could be heard along the corridors. In 1967, a newspaper article reported the tale had been an invention of owner Jack Wilding, who never believed ghost sto- who believed ghost stories to be good for business. <laughs> Haffrington Hall is an impressive red brick Elizabethan property with tall chimneys. Most of the rooms are still filled with original paintings and furnishings and the house has what is probably the best collection of priest holes of any home in the country. It was originally built in the 1300s and developed in the late 1500s. Uh, Priest sides were concealed areas so priests could hide during the time when Catholics were being persecuted. At Haverington Hall, one of the hides was above the bread oven, in the thickness of the chimney stack. There's even a concealed chapel at the property. Uh, There's a tale of Mistress Hicks, who was thought to have been a witch. She was hanged for witchcrafts at the crossroads close to the hall, with the belief that the formation of the cross would contain her spirit. Uh, But it wasn't long before she was back and haunting the area. Mistress Hicks is frequently spotted roaming the grounds of Haverington Hall. In 1998, a party of schoolgirls believed they spotted the ghost of an elderly woman at Haverington Hall. Two of the group, two of a, a, from, from a group of historical reenactors staying in the hall in 1992, said they were awoken by a shadow which passed through the keel of the room while the door was locked. A 14-year-old boy on a school trip told the whole guests that he'd seen the face of a white figure looking out of the North Tower, which was the curator's room and was not open to the public. One guide investigated and found all doors locked, so no one could have gained access. The Wolfley at Drakelow, adjacent to Kinver Edge, an ancient document gives reference to this place, has been home to a dragon. Drakelow Tunnels began life as a shadow factory for British Leyland during the Second World War, producing aero engines. During the Cold War, Drakelow Tunnels became a nuclear bomb shelter, designated as regional seat of Government 9. The tunnels were originally done out of sandstone explosives were used to blast out more than three miles of an underground complex and not without serious accidents. One of the worst on record took place in October 1941 when a roof collapsed in Tunnel 1 and killed three men. Uh, The tunnels themselves, um, 1940s war music has been heard And when the source of the music is tracked, it immediately stops. Strange mists have been reported to descend on Tunnel 4, and on one occasion a caretaker's two German shepherds were transfixed by a misty figure in the tunnel. The dog bolted off terrified and would not return. People are said to experience the same feelings of being watched, and some have been touched or pushed. A male figure has been spotted on one cage and disappearing around a fully lit doorway. The figure has been given the name Oswald and is thought to have been one of the workers killed in the, disc- in the construction of the tunnels. In Beaudley, 14-year-old Robert Millward saw a glowing figure of an elderly man while lying on a city in his grandmother's home. 
Susan Wolwen, an alleged witch of Bukley. Local legend tells that she grew horns out of her head and had them removed every three years in order for the next set to grow grow through. And an old record says that a Mr Soley had one of them plated in silver. The Ashmolean Museum apparently has one of its horns, her horns in its collection. Sandy Weiwei, who runs the 18th century Talbot Inn in Hall Street, uh, believes the pub has acquired spirits other than those found on the sh- top shelf, with a number of unusual occurrences happening on the premises. There have been a number of sightings of a ghost of a, a man in a black coat by her, and her family in the pub for in the 28 years they've run it. A picture taken for Halloween in 1989 that seems to have caught the apparition in the Talbot bar. Mrs Weiwei dressed up to promote the pub's Halloween night, uh, but when the picture was developed, she was shocked to see a a man in a black coat in the bar. For years she kept quiet due to her own cynicism about ghosts and spirits, Uh, but there were regular sightings of the ghost by her children, other family members and customers, as well as a string of spooky goings-on in recent years. One remarkable thing was the bottle of beer was cleanly sliced and left on the bar when the pub was closed. There is no explanation for how that occurred. The George Hotel in Budley CCT footage has found to have shown mysterious shadows moving around the rooms. Cleaners at the hotel have been having strange experiences there for years, such as doors slamming shut unexpectedly and things moving around on their own. There's also been a rumour over the years about a grey lady who walks around the ballroom at night. Strange sightings of a ghost train on the Seven Valley Railway and a number of reports of a phantom steam train. It is a recorded fact that four people were killed during the making of the Butley Tunnel in the 1880s. A train was allegedly seen late at night by people who said that they heard the tracks vibrate and saw a ghostly shimmering haze. Along the tracks in Bridge North, Shropshire, Arnold was the name given to a ghostly figure seen by Mr and Mrs Reynolds who believed he would manifest to warn them of an impending accident. It may have been the same entity spotted by a soldier on duty during the Second World War. (music) Dal's Church and Graveyard was first built on top of a Norman chapel in the late 1700s as St Andrew's. Restored during the Victorian era with an adjoining building and then demolished in 1956. Since then it's been left to the elements with little attempt made to maintain or tidy the woods that were planted around it centuries ago. A mysterious man has been seen several times walking back and forth along what was once the path along the front of the chapel ruins. Some of the ruins of the parish room are still standing today though decaying with time the graveyard is the final resting place of the last reverend of the church here uh, joseph tonks also susan wohan a lady whose name is linked with many tales of satanic worship and witchcraft apparently also growing horns and shedding them every so often the graveyard also has a mort safe These are most commonly used to prevent grave robbers from stealing bodies, but also having a much more sinister possibility of keeping the deceased encased and preventing the dead from returning one day. These often consist of iron bars over the grave and are much more common in Scotland where grave robbery was also more common, especially in Edinburgh where Birken Hare achieved notoriety. Uh, there are such, there are other stories and sightings of hooded figures and a ghostly girl. Uh, 
uh, the wharf is a haunted pub in Starport with stories of deceased children and an old foreman who sits at the bar. And Mark Potter began filming a short film about Trixie the ghost dog. Uh, the supposedly haunted alleyway um, between Lickhill and Worth Crescent. People would say they heard the dog howling at night. I started doing some research and speaking to older generations locally. And it seems the story revolved over the years to scare kids to stop them playing down there. It wasn't until I began editing later and I noticed something in the background. I blew up the image and I was cobsmacked. I'm a sceptic. I don't go out looking for ghosts. I just like highlighting the stories that scare me. But I didn't see a cat or dog while I was filming. Priory House is a timber frame building found on Friar Street, Droitwich. It's said to date back from the mid 17th century, though a, so a solar wing is thought to have been older. Priory House is said to be. Priory House office is said to be haunted by the ghost of Captain Sir Richard Carberry. Sir Richard Carberry was encouraged to marry his cousin Lucretia in order to claim his inheritance. Lucretia, however, was an unwilling bride and stabbed Sir Richard to, to death in a small room at the rear of the building. It was in this room that a spirit terrified a guest in 1875. It's said that Richard, Sir Richard visits the house every 50 years. That's due again on April the 14th, 2025. And ghostly friars have also been seen in the building, as well as the nearby Norbury Theatre. Chapel Bridge carries town centre traffic across the river Salwap and is named because a chapel once stood across it. Uh, based in the 17th century, a verger was in the habit of riding a horse to a local hostelry, where he enjoyed several jugs. In fact, he got so drunk that he would always rely on <coughs> his trusty horse to find the way back to the chapel. On one night, however, the horse was spooked by a thunderstorm and jumped from the bridge. The verger so suffered a broken neck and died. Since that fateful night, there have been numerous sightings of horse and rider on the bridge, who then disappear. In the summer of 1976, a woman walking along Primesland Way was amazed to see a scruffy, cap-wearing boy of about nine playing with a whip and top, a very Victorian game. The amazing thing was the boy was hovering for about one and a half metres above the road surface. He was thoroughly enjoying himself. I stood and watched for about five minutes. The Cop Cop Elm Pub was built in 1806 and it's on the A38, just south of Droitwich. One evening in 1996, a regular suddenly went white as a sheet and lifted a chair as if he was using it to defend himself from some invisible enemy. He then tried to escape the pub through a fire exit and when this failed he tried to smash a window. He was in such a state an ambulance was called and he never returned to the pub. A phantom hitchhiker scared the life out of a motorist travelling along the AIM 38 in 1975. A rain was lashing down when the mini van driver spotted a man thumb in a lift just past the Droitwich Golf Club Junction. He pulled over and opened the passenger's door, but the hitchhiker had vanished. A search around the vehicle found no trace of him. I drove off as fast as I could, said the driver. It was very frightening. The A38 Phantom struck near Upton Warren in 1991 and stepped into the path of an oncoming car before disappearing. In both instances, the figure was wearing a long coat with the collar turned up. Uh, the half-timbered Salwarp court dates back to the 1400s. 
However, part of the rear of the property was sliced off by construction of Deutrich Canal. Uh, the 19th century Worcestershire writer John Noakes reported that on a particularly dark night, the ghost of a former owner was said to glide down to the embankment and then suicidally commit himself to the waters below. If it's possible for a ghost to actually commit suicide, of course. <laughs> At a droit reached roadside are memorials to dead pets that have been linked to being nearby haunted mansion. <coughs> Historic millionaire Salt King, Sir John Corbett, lived at nearby Ch Chateau Impney, where he created a pet cemetery of his own. His ghost is still said to haunt the majestic mansion on the grounds of the edge of Birmingham off the M5 Junction 4 near Bromsgrove. Uh, visitors have reported here in the Thames, Hey Girl Don't Bother Me, coming from the basement of the hotel. A monolithic obelisk uh, featuring words from the number of headstones from the Pet Cemetery was removed to the edge of Lido Park in 2016. The Pet Cemetery and Memorial was originally in a secluded area outside Mill Cottage in the grounds of Victorian Chateau Empney. His love and dogs and horses can clearly be seen in the devoted final farewells. Poignant messages can be read on all its faces and date back as far as 1877. They speak of horses and dogs who have long gone and buried in the spooky grounds of the chateau. Henry Hall, uh, William and Mary <coughs> house built by Reverend Richard Vernon. It was the seat of the Vernon family for three centuries and was developed into its current impressive form by Thomas Vernon in 1706. In the 1770s it was passed to young Emma Vernon and a search began for a worthy husband. Uh, the renowned beauty wed Henry Cecil heir to Burley House and the title of the Earl of Exeter. However, it was never a match made in heaven and the marriage was further strained when the children died in infancy and they accrued large debts when mod remodelling Hanbury Hall. Eight years into the marriage, en Emma began an affair with um, the village curate, William Sneed, the relationship continued for five years before she finally confessed all to a forgiving Henry. And later that year, Emma and William, now back in, now back in the, his hometown of Lichfield, hatched a plan to elope. When Emma and Henry were in Birmingham on business, Emma sneaked off to meet William at her inn. Henry could not bear to stay at Hanbury Hall and retreated to a farmhouse in Shropshire, adopting the nom de plume of John Jones. <laughs> Hardly surprising, as it's an extremely common name in Shropshire. In, uh, in fact, I had an uncle called it. In 1791, he divorced Emma and married the farmer's daughter. Uh, this left Emma free to marry William, uh, which she did the following year. Uh, but his tuberculous growing steadily worse. The couple set off for Portugal in search of a healthy Mediterranean heir. However, William soon succumbed to his illness and a heartbroken Emma travelled back to England, uh, though not to Henbury Hall, as Henry had sold off his constants and locked it up. After Henry's death in 1804, Emma was finally able to return to her childhood home, Hanbury Hall, and her ghost is often seen wearing black mourning the loss of a true love. Uh, but she, she remarried her third husband, John Phillips, and she remained at the estate until her passing in 1881. Emma had made it clear that she did not want to be interred in the Vernon family vault at Hanbury Hall. She was asked to be buried in a churchyard and a sheet that had once covered William's body. 
The emotional impact of those long ago events has apparently lingered on at Hanbury Hall and there have been a number of sightings of Emma's ghost dressed in black around the grounds. There have been many sightings of a ghost dressed in black drifting serenely along the route between the house and the church uh, that her living self used to take to enjoy her trysts with her lover. I actually attended a wedding at Hanbury Hall but was completely unaware of this story. The Fountain Inn is situated just outside of Tenbury Wells. Originally a traditional black and white 17th century farmhouse, it first became a beer and cider house in 1855. It was then known as the Hippodrome, meaning racetrack, in recognition of the horse racing that used to take place on Aldwood Common adjacent to the pub. As a coach house and cider mill, it would serve the drovers with their herds on the way to market in England from the lush feeding grounds of the Welsh Hills. Uh, There are many interesting stories connected to the Fountain Inn, most notably... um, uh, lay claim to it being a haunted pub. Mr. Toombs, the previous landlord who died while saving dogs from a fire at the pub in 1958, is still resident at the Fountain Inn and is the friendly ghost that occasionally haunts the pub. Tembridge Wells, of course, is famous for its mistletoe festival. Uh, the legend of the mistletoe bow is a ghost story that first appeared in a poem nearly 200 years ago, and many believe it to be true. And numerous castles and stately homes in southern England claim the gruesome tale as their own, although none are associated with Tunbridge Wells, despite the story being popular during the festival. A new bride was playing a, um, a game of hide-and-seek and trying to get away from, from the crowd during her wedding breakfast she hides in a chest in the attic and is unable to escape she's not discovered by her family and friends and suffocates or dies of thirst the body is found many years later in the locked chest as a skeleton in a wedding dress <laughs> 